Welcome to Wannabe Clutter Free, formerly Wannabe Minimalist, the podcast for busy families who are tired of the chaos, fed up with being overwhelmed, and ready to enjoy life again. Each week, we talk about how to let go of the clutter so that you can focus on the things that actually matter. And it's not just physical clutter. We talk about the mental and emotional stuff too, because if it's holding you back, it's time to ditch it. I share what I've done in my own life to declutter, organize, and calm the chaos, but you won't just hear it from me. There are amazing guests too. It's practical, doable, and simple for those of us that want to be clutter-free. Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome back to the show. My name is Deanna Yates, and you are listening to episode 222 of the Wanna Be Clutter Free podcast. On today's episode, I am chatting with Emily Nichols about habits and how we can use our habits to create the life and home that we want to wake up to every day. I met Emily earlier this year, and she is a powerhouse. I love her energy, and I think you are going to love her too. But before we get into it, I want to just say a quick thank you for joining me today. I hope you like what you hear. And if you do, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Plus, I was at a podcast conference recently, and it turns out that subscribing is one of the best ways that you can actually help the show, and it's really easy. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now let's quickly learn about my guests so we can dive into the good stuff. Emily Nichols is the host of Habit Hack Your Health. It is a top 1.5% podcast that helps working moms and entrepreneurs habit hack their health in less time, guilt-free. So from her own struggles, Emily finally found that women have to do habits differently, and she's sharing the solutions on how to live a healthy lifestyle that doesn't feel overwhelming or complicated, but rather sustainable and empowering through the power of habit hacking. So think of this as Atomic Habits for Women. Emily is on a mission to define what health really means and equip other women with these sustainable habit hacks to help you train for life. Emily is also a wife, boy mom to two moms, certified personal trainer, orange theory coach, yoga and meditation instructor, behavior change specialist, and a Taco Tuesday enthusiast. I can get on board with that. So if you want to check out more about Emily, I will have links to all of her information in the show notes, which you can find at wannabeclutterfree.com slash 222. Again, that's wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 222. And now let's get to our conversation. Well, hey, Emily, welcome to Wanna Be Clutter Free. How are you doing today? I'm so good, Deanna. How are you? Oh, I'm great. We were just chatting a little bit before we started about how school is back in session now, and yours has been in session for a little bit, but mine, oh goodness, I am still grappling with the new routine and the new habits, which I am si- excited to talk about today. But before we jump into that, if people don't know you from the summit we did recently, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, well, Deanna, first, thank you so much for inviting me to be a guest on your show. I just love chatting with you and your mission and how you share your heart. It's so amazing. But my name is Emily Nichols. I am the host of Habit Hack Your Health. It's a top-ranked podcast helping women, like it says, habit hack their health. So I have a background of being a fitness instructor since 2016, and I've been teaching group fitness, personal training. I've probably taught every format possible, and As I've been working with folks throughout the years, I noticed, well, women, we we know what we need to do. We know we need to take care of our bodies and eat well to fuel our bodies and our soul. We need to talk a little nicer to ourselves, but we're just not doing that. And through my own research, my own experiences working with folks and becoming a behavior change specialist, it's because women have to do habits differently. We have to have some type of habit strategy to take action create momentum, but also be able to pivot through different seasons of your life, such as school starting. So I'm a mom as well. I have two boys, 16 and 12, which is this a whole new realm of parenthood I'm in right now. For sure, my son is driving, which is fun. It frees up a little bit of a time for me, but emotionally it's like my son is driving. <laughs> all that. But my husband and I have been married for 20 years for high school sweethearts. And we love to spend time outdoors together and really being an active family and living out loud an example for our kids as they grow into young men as well. Mm, I love that. You said so many fun things there that living out loud. I feel like I'm being called to do that right now. Like I just feel like 
oh, I've been in kind of a serious mode recently and I just want to change that. But also I feel like I must be in a pivotal time in my life because what seems to have worked in the past isn't necessarily working as well right now. I don't know. I feel like things must be changing. Our daughter is 11. She's in sixth grade, but it's still elementary here. And so we haven't quite had to do the transition to junior high, which I know next year is just going to be a whole new ball game for me. But I don't know. Anyway, I'm excited to chat with you today because I think so much of what we're going to talk about today will pertain to my own life. And hopefully I can help listeners with some real life examples as we get into things. But you said something there about women needing to approach their habits differently, and especially when it comes to making these behavioral changes. And I see that both in what you do with health and fitness, but also with our homes, like in how we declutter and organize and just looking at life a little bit differently. So why do you believe we need a different approach? Well, I feel like as women, we're very nurturing beings by nature, right? We have a lot of tabs open in our head and literally on our computer as well. If you were to look at all the tabs on my laptop, like seriously, but it's everything I have going on right now, but it's not, and it's the same in my head, but it's not just tabs open for me, like my work calendar, appointments, projects I'm working on. It's, oh, my son that needs to renew his car insurance or my other son, we got to outline his cross country schedule. And I got to send that to both of the grandmas to make sure they can be there. And oh, there's a pile of dishes from lunch that I didn't have a chance to clean up. I know that's still sitting there. And oh, I have two full bags. This is real life. This is really happening. I have two big baskets of laundry on my bed that I need to fold, but we just got a new puppy and I haven't been sleeping well. So I've been wanting to get to bed earlier and earlier and the laundry's piling up. I have all these tabs open. So it makes it really hard to be like, I really, I'm feeling disorganized. I'm feeling overwhelmed. And sometimes that can spill out physically in our home, it can manifest itself physically in your body where you, maybe you feel lethargic and you don't have energy to want to take care of yourself, where it gets to a point where you're just like, well, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just, I, it's exhausting and overwhelming to even open up just one more tab, even though I know it will be good for my mental health, my physical health. It's just so overwhelming and so exhausting. So we have to think about habits a little bit differently. Not to say that men don't have all these tabs open in their heads, as well. I know my husband certainly does. As women, though, I just notice it he doesn't hold on to it as much as we do. He lets it go. He's more apt to being like, oh, well, it's more black and white for him, just in his personality. And a lot of women I work there has it just seems to be the same thing. So we have to have some type of habit strategy to take action, build momentum, and in the meantime, be flexible as life gets in the way. I hear you on that. And anybody listening, yes. I mean, Emily and I both, we walk this walk, we do this all the time, and we still sometimes have these moments where it's difficult. I was, I've been talking recently about doing a whole home declutter again. And I, my husband and I, I was talking to this the other day, I was like, why does the house feel cluttered? We don't have that much stuff. What is going on? Like he's like, yeah, we don't even bring much into the house. And I feel like we've just gotten to a different level, right? You, It's like a staircase and I feel like I'm at that next step and I'm like, okay, it's time to reevaluate and do this thing again. So as you were talking, it made me, yes, like all these tabs open, all these things going on. And sometimes oh, I'm like, okay, I got to the next level. So now the tabs have to shift a little bit. So I'm interested in this a little bit more. And one thing I hear all the time is this idea of a habit loop. Can you explain what a habit loop is and then maybe how it can apply to our mom lives? We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Emily's going to talk to us about a habit loop, what that actually means, how we can implement it, and how it actually makes a huge difference in your life. I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast, What Fresh Hell?, laughing in the face of motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. (laughs) Well, you're Amy more of a we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? 
And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, welcome back. Sure, sure. I love habit loops. It's one of my favorite habit strategies to help us take action, right? A lot of times we had the best of intentions to do this project in our closet. We have this new workout plan we want to try. We have the best of intentions, but we actually have to do it. We have to actually take action and build momentum. And a habit loop is a really great way to do that. Now, when you think about it, I read something the other day that says we make 35,000 decisions in a day. And I would imagine for moms, it's more than that, which sounds crazy, but we're constantly making all these decisions. We have all those tabs open, right? Well, we have all these habit loops throughout our day that help us take action. There's some type of trigger, there's some type of cue, and there's some type of reward. So for example, brushing your teeth, there's already a habit loop that you have around that. Maybe it's after I step out of the shower, that's the cue, the routine is I brush my teeth, the reward on the other side is great, I have good dental hygiene. Like it's as simple as that. Well, we can apply that towards decluttering our homes, starting an exercise routine as far as maybe after you eat dinner, that's your cue to start a routine of, okay, kids are going to help out with dishes. I'm going to clean up the main, the kitchen counter because it always gets cluttered throughout the day, right? That's where... Your husband sets his keys. You've opened the bills for the day. The kids have come home and set stuff there. And on the other side, that reward is, okay, we reset the home. Everyone helped out. I feel a little less overwhelmed. It can be as simple as that, but it takes some intentionality to think about what type of trigger or what type of event or location can I use to do the routine and really lean into the reward on the other side, which unfortunately for us moms, that's the hard part because we're not quick to be like, well, look at me, way to go, me, we did it. Versus telling your kids, I'm so proud of you. Look how awesome you are. We're, that's not second nature to us, but that actually is changing the neural pathways in your head to help you close that loop and be like, wow, it feels really good when I do that. I'm going to keep doing that because I want that reward. I want to feel good. And then eventually you're not sitting there like, okay, it's time for my cue, routine, reward. You just do it. Just like brushing your teeth, right? Yeah. Okay. What about like, okay, so what you said there, which I think could help us get past that moment of like, yay me, pat on the back, is if you have your family involved, right? It is easier, so much easier to praise them. But then maybe instead of saying you, maybe you can say we. And then everybody, you're like, okay, I'm part of we. Look what we did. Good job, us, right? So it, because yes, it does feel so silly to praise yourself sometimes, which is, we need to get over that. We're amazing and we do amazing things and we need to be rewarded for those. And if we're the only one that notices, then gosh darn it, give ourselves a pat on the back. You're just going to give yourself a pat on the back. And that's a really good point. When I work with a lot of clients for fitness wise, a lot of times their goals at first start with, I want to do this for my kids. I want to be a grandma someday and be able to get up and off the floor. And I'm like, those are great goals. Those are really great reasons why. But usually when they start leaning into it even more, then it turns into, I feel really good. I have more energy. I talk nicer to myself. And it can really change that why and motivation long term too. But yeah, starting with we, I love that. You said something about the habit loop being one of your favorite habit strategies. Do you have a favorite? Is that your favorite one? Do you have another one that you really like? Yeah, that's definitely my favorite one because it puts the habit into action. It gives you momentum. But my other favorite habit strategy is habit tracking because it gives you actual data. It gives you the facts when we are very feeling-oriented people. So let me explain. So maybe you're starting this new habit and you just put a little calendar on your refrigerator and you're checking off each day that you guys cleaned up all, we all cleaned up together after dinner. Great. Well, maybe you have a few nights where you have some sports events, you have like your husband and you have a work dinner, you have to go to things have piled up. Maybe you didn't get it done a couple of days because right, life happens. 
But habit tracking gives you, like I I like to say, the facts when the feelings take over because maybe it's been a whole week and you're like, gosh, I just missed so many days of this new habit I wanted to do. And you're able to look at a tracker or just your calendar that you checked it off and be like, well, I did it four out of seven days of the week. Like, give myself a break. I did really great. So it gives you some facts to look at and build momentum and just reinforce that habit even more and give yourself a little grace for when life will ultimately get in the way. I mm, love that. Gives you the facts when the feelings take over, habit tracking. Um, and is a calendar your favorite way to do that? Or do you have like a, a preferred tracker? Yeah, for me, I have a habit tracker that I've personally made where I can fill it in. If I'm using one personally for myself, I like to use a circular one and I use pretty pens and make it like a whole experience to make it more fun for me to track the habit and to keep it up in my office so I can visually see it. And it's almost like, oh, it's pretty and it's right there. And look, I'm doing it because habit tracking in itself needs to be a habit, right? Because you might have a habit tracker, but maybe you're not using it. So maybe on the other side of that reward, the other part of the reward is like when you make a to-do list and you write something on there you already did. So you can check it off. It's the same thing. So you're reinforcing that reward and you go, boop, and check. So you can check it on a calendar. That works really great. You can use a digital one. There's a, a lot of really good ones supported by Excel or Google Sheets if you prefer like a digital one. You don't have to play around with it and see what you personally prefer. Okay. Love that. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Emily's going to talk us through some of the biggest challenges that women face when trying to establish new habits. You're not going to want to miss it. All right, so what are some simple habit hacks that busy women can start implementing today? Now, whether that's just improving their lives overall, it doesn't necessarily have to be decluttering or with fitness, but those tips are always welcome. Yeah, for sure, for sure. What I just mentioned, like having a habit in the evening of some type of nightly reset before you go to bed so you don't wake up to clutter, right? When we're feeling the clutter in our home, that almost is like the clutter in our minds going on sometimes as well. We do something in our community where every Sunday we do a Sunday reset. We literally reset our home, but we're also resetting our minds and resetting ourselves for the week. So that usually starts with a habit loop. For me, it's usually after we go to church and we come home and eat breakfast. And then from there, I make my grocery list for the week. I personally like doing grocery pickup because it's quick and I don't have to go in the store and take up a lot of time. And then I also sit down and I have a paper calendar that I use for my workouts. I write out my workouts because I want to keep it separate from my Google calendar where all those appointments on there are for everyone else. They're not for me. So I keep it separate from that. I, I sit down with my husband and the boys to be like, here's what's going on this week. Who needs rides? Where? We have this family event going on. There's a cross country meet. Okay, break. Everyone knows what's going on for the week and what their role is. Who's taking out the trash? Whose turn is it to gather? Whose turn is it to take it out? Simple things like that. That way you're getting out all of the clutter in your head and reinforcing the truths, having them help and take ownership through the week. So that kind of declutters your mind. Now, as far as movement goes, like I said, I like to write out my workouts as my own little habit hack in my own little calendar. I like to use pretty pens for that as well. I write out what I'm going to do because if I don't have a plan, I'll just sit there and twiddle my thumbs and be like, what am I going to do? What, do I, what am I going to do for my workout today? And then I just don't want to do anything or it's not effective and I've wasted time as well. And a lot of times when we think of movement, we think it has to be a long workout. We have to go somewhere for that. But it, you can implement little habit hacks throughout your day to get more movement in, whether that's while you're brushing your teeth, you have a little cue to do calf raises or little squats. We do something in our community. It's so funny because we, we just got done doing a water challenge, like drinking enough water. So we've all been going to the bathroom a lot. And so we're like, okay. Let's do 10 squats every time after we go to the bathroom so we compound that that movement over time. And that's just a really great example too, Deanna, as far as like the compound effect, right? We think we have to try to do it all at once. And if I was to go to the bathroom 10 times a day and I'm doing 10 squats each time, that's 100 squat for, squats versus me standing here and being like, okay, let's do 100 squats. Like my quads would burn out, my glutes, I would lose, my form would fall. I would like just not probably even finish it. So it's like, that's ridiculous. That's too much. 
But that's a lot of times what we think and the pressure we put on ourselves. If we take it back and just implement small little hacks like that, it can compound over time and it's a lot more sustainable versus overwhelming that way. I love that. So easy way, like you just said, 100 squats in a day if you're just doing 10 at a time. And same, you can do that in your home, right? I'm going to pick up 10 things as soon as so as soon as I get back from school drop off. I'm going to pick up 10 things and put them away. Or as soon as I get home at the end of the day, I'm going to pick up 10 things and put them away. And then once dinner's done, I'm going to pick up 10 more things and put them away. And then when I get up to go to the bathroom, I'm going to put 10 more things away. Like you can do that easily throughout the day. And 10 is a pretty simple amount to pick up. Or if you listened to the episode a few weeks ago about feng shui, do nine. Apparently nine is very auspicious in feng shui. So let's make it nine. And then it's a little little less daunting. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's just thinking about it differently. I love it. Yeah. That's so great. Okay, so what? how do you help women overcome the overwhelm that often comes with starting new habits? Because like you were saying earlier, I know we just talked about breaking it down, but we have these really good intentions. But I think oftentimes, myself included, I try to bite off more than I could chew. I was talking about doing a whole house declutter, right? And just my body language around that is just like, ugh, ugh, right? And but. Still, at the same time, I'm still like, no, I'm still doing it. I'm just not doing it all in one day, in one sitting. But how do you break down these really actually goals that we really want to hit, but they're just overwhelming because we're at space one and we want to get to space 100 on this game of life that we're playing. So how do we do that? Yeah. You almost have to reverse engineer it and think about it backwards. So I would start with something that we call like our habit identity. So why do you want to declutter a space? I want to declutter this space because this space, when I step into it, it makes me feel overwhelmed. I feel chaotic or my calendar is what I need to declutter and say no to things and ask for help and set boundaries. Okay, well, that's great. So you're like, I want to be more patient. I want to feel less decluttered. Great. Or I want to declutter and feel less disorganized. That's perfect. Okay, well, what habits are going to support you in feeling that way? What habits are going to support you in feeling that way? And like you said, you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to, every time I step in the room once a day, I'm just going to remove 10 things. Great. That's super great. And just focus on one thing at a time. Because like you said, a lot of times we have the best of intentions and we want to do it all especially in my realm of health and fitness. They're like, I'm going to do it all. It's usually Sunday night. They sit down Monday to make this big plan for the week. We've all done it, right? We have everyone shaking their head. Oh gosh, yes. I'm laughing because I have been there like this. Yes. We've all done it. And it's because we have the best of intentions and we want to feel great, but we are crazy busy moms and trying to do it all is setting yourself up, unfortunately, for sabotage because- you, you start out like the first few days, you're like, I am decluttering this room. I'm spending an hour every day doing it. Like got all the bags out where I'm going to take these things. I'm working out every day. I've done like a five hour meal prep, which all the dishes with that. Oh my goodness. And then you have the best of intentions and then you get sick or you have to pick up a sick kid from school or you got to run shoes up to someone because they forgot ABC at school and your plans go out the window and then you're frustrated And then you have to start over again. And then you lost your momentum. You lost your steam. And then you're just frustrated with yourself. Like, why can't I ever stick to something? Why can't I ever do this? Well, we take a step back and say, well, why did I want to do this in the first place? What was my habit identity? What was one area I wanted to focus on of my health, of my home? And how can I get to that point where it feels more in control. It's just an unconscious habit. And when it's feeling like it's not a chore, it's coming more natural to you, then it's like, okay, well, maybe I can go do this with another room now. Or maybe I can spend a little more time meal prepping. Or I was doing 10-minute workouts. Now I can do, I have the capacity to do 20 minutes now. But we try to do it all at once and life, I guarantee it, will get in the way. So if you just focus on why your habit identity, reverse engineer it with some small, tiny little habits, utilize those habit loops we were talking about to take action, that's for sure going to be way more sustainable for you. 
So good. Oh, I just want to let that one soak in for just a minute. I love the reverse engineer. And yes, I often say that too, right? Start with why. Like, Why is this all of a sudden the thing you want to do? Why is it coming to the surface now? Why are you wanting to make a change now? Because yes, I think that is tapping into that and then figuring out the little things you can do is going to make the biggest difference. So even myself, I have to go back in and why is my home feeling cluttered now? What is it about the season of life I'm in, right? And things change, right? Maybe it's our daughter is bringing home more stuff because she's just getting older. So we have to clear out some of the baby or things that she doesn't need or want anymore. Maybe it's that I'm in a busy season in my career. And so the things that didn't used to bother me around the home are now just all of a sudden I'm like, I don't have the capacity, right? Like I just no longer have, my brain is so filled. I've got too many tabs open. I no longer have the capacity to let the visual clutter hang out here where I used to be like, eh, no big deal. I'll get to it later. Now I'm like, I can't, I just can't, I can't process it anymore. My brain is full. So I think though that why can change too, or it has been changing for me at least. Sure. I think you mentioned something really important too, Deanna, is asking yourself, what season of life am I in right now, right? My season of life looked totally different 10 years ago than what it does right now. Like as far as your home, where you're at in your career, the age of your kids, you have to think of that and be like, okay, a lot of times we are our biggest comparison or the person we're hardest the most on is ourselves or a, a past version of ourselves. Like, why can't I be like me from 10 years ago. And it's like, well, you're a different person now. You're in a different season of life and that's okay. And I think it's good to explore that and be like, well, how am I going to meet myself where I am now? And it, use some of these strategies we've been talking about to help you take action. Okay. One other thing that made me think when you were talking before about the little habits we can do is how can we be consistent? Because I know that's something where a lot of people struggle or like you're like, okay, I've got all these big plans. I think it taps into that idea of like, okay, I'm going to change everything this week. And change doesn't happen that way unless you really are. I think change can happen that dramatically when life circumstances completely change, right? You move a house, you, you move states, you go on vacation, like things that are completely different than your current everyday I think that's when you can make these big sweeping changes because life is in a huge upheaval moment. But most of us don't, that's not our normal life when we decide we want to make these changes. So how can we be consistent when things throw us off, when our kids get sick, when we get sick, when any of this happens? What do you tap into? How do you go back to like, okay, let's restart? You know, consistency is the biggest challenge other than time (laughs) that I hear from I'm sure you hear that too. It's in all realms. It's in all realms. It's always like, gosh, I start off strong, but I just can't stay consistent. And it's going back to the strategies we use, we talked about. It's going back to your why. But I also think it's going back to thinking about you have to be consistently flexible, right? You have to be consistently flexible because we do get set in our ways. And when life throws us a curveball, we're like, gosh, it's so frustrating. Why can't I just stick with it? And then you find yourself in a habit of maybe a negative mindset where you're like, I just can't do it. So I'm just going to do nothing. I'll just have to wait till this happens. Wait till my kids get older. Let me tell you, they don't slow down from there. Let, or if I'm just warning you guys, if you don't have a teenager, like or two, a te- te- preteen and a teen like I do. You have to be consistently flexible. So one thing that I always like to do is have a backup plan in mind, okay? It doesn't have to be big. For me, it's movement is a big form of self-care. For me, it's a good form of mental energy. For me, physical energy. And it didn't used to be that way. Now it is. And it's something I crave every day. Like even my kids are like, mom, have you, do you need to go on a walk or something today? (laughs) Uh, yes, I do. Goodbye. But for me, if I notice, I'm like, gosh, I haven't moved my body today. And back in my mind, I'm like, okay, I need to do like a 10 minute yoga flow before I go to bed, or I don't have capacity for what I wanted to do today. I'm just going to just move my body for 10 minutes. However I can, or you can pull up like a free YouTube video or something like that. The same could go for your home. Like 
maybe you've been wanting to slowly declutter a certain area and it's been a few days and you're like, I just, I haven't had the capacity to do it. Life has just been life thing. It's like, okay, well, I'm just going to step in there and just do one thing, just remove one area, or I'm just going to like vacuum or something that helps you feel a little bit more in control and that you're doing something. Something is always better than nothing. And even if you only have 1% to give, that is your total capacity that you are able to give today. Congratulations. You just gave a hundred percent. If 1% is the only little bit you have and you gave that, then you gave it your all today. So you have to reframe it like that and think, okay, it's hard to be consistent. Absolutely. But I can be consistently flexible and always have something that I can do that is so tiny. That way I'm telling my mind, I'm still making progress. Even if it's baby steps, those baby steps are better than staying stagnant. Yeah, so good. Those baby steps are better than staying stagnant. Yes. And like you said, at least you made progress. A little bit of progress is better than no progress or backtracking or any of that. So in all areas, whether that is starting a business, whether that is your health journey, whether it is cleaning up your house and decluttering and organizing, absolutely, right? Go back to those 10, like just do, just pick up nine things, do 10 squats, something where you're just a little bit where you said like, look, I didn't give up on myself today. I didn't give up. I did a little bit. I love that. So, 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 so good. Emily, is there anything else you want to share with the listeners that I just didn't get to today that you're thinking like, no, I got to make sure they hear this one thing? I think we were very thorough. I just want everyone listening. Yeah, this is so good. I want everyone to listen to know that it's not your fault. Maybe your habits haven't been sticking for you or if you always feel like you're starting and stopping, you just have to think about it differently like we've talked about today and be able to use the systems that Deanna teaches that I teach to help you build momentum and confidence in yourself. You can do it. Oh, you can do it. I believe in you. Definitely. If you're listening to this, I totally believe you can make the changes you want to make in your life. So awesome. Emily, where can people find you? I know they're going to want to find out more about you and follow along. Yeah, everyone can connect with me over at the podcast. You can listen to Habit Hack Your Health wherever you listen to your podcast. And come on over. There's a bunch of freebies in the show notes. And if you're loving today's episode, make sure to leave Deanna a review and come over and listen to my show and leave a review as well. It's like little love notes to us to let us know what you're loving about our shows. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah. Subscribe to Emily's show. Well, mine too, of course, but subscribe to Emily's show. She's got such great information over there. You're not going to want to miss it. So, all right. Well, before I go, I always love to ask three rapid fire questions. And so my first one is what does clutter free mean to you? Mm, clutter free for me. Do you think of decluttering your home? But for me, it's decluttering my mind. For me, it's closing the tabs. I was on vacation with my husband last year and I had my laptop off. He was um, scheduling a tea time for my oldest son and him to go golfing. And he opened my laptop and he was like, what is all of this, all these tabs up? And I said, babe, that is my head. He closed them all. And I could feel my palms like sweating and my heart rate going up like, ah. but it was okay. It was actually freeing. I love that. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to close them all up. All right. Great. Number two, what's making you happy right now or in this season of life? Well, like I said, we just got a new puppy at our home. So that's super, it's like a newborn and a toddler all at once. It's like they're up at night and during the day, you can't take your eyes off of them, (laughs) but it's super fun. And just this season of life with our kids, it's really fun it's very sentimental at the same time. My son's a junior and it's very exciting to think about them going into a new season of life and how I can support them. But we're just, we're wanting to have fun and just making sure we're preparing some confident, respectful young men in their lives. And so that's super fun. And just adding a puppy right now has been a really great addition to our family. Oh, it's so great. What kind of puppy? A Labrador, a yellow lab. Oh, oh gosh. How fun. How fun. How fun. All right. And then my last question, what is a goal you have for yourself this year? Well, I'm actually launching a fitness app at the end of September. It's something my clients have been asking of me for a long time. I've always coached people 
in person and I started the podcast to talk all about habit strategy and it's been something that's been on my heart for a long time. And honestly, I've had a lot of self-limiting doubts about it. And I'm like, this is my area of expertise. I'm going to put it out. So I'm really excited about it. It's a lot. It's been a labor of love, but I'm really excited just to be able to serve my audience in this capacity because they've been asking for it. So I'm really excited to put that out there and reach that goal. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. That's so amazing. That is just so amazing. Congratulations. That's a fantastic. I know that's been a lot of work in progress though. For, so to see that come to fruition, look at all those little habits that have added up to this giant release. That's amazing. Well, congratulations, Emily, on that. And yeah, we'll definitely be checking it out in, when it comes out at the end of September. So awesome. We'll make sure we link to it in the show notes when it comes out. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know habits are such a big thing that can make, well, they can be so tiny, but they can make such big changes in our life. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing your expertise. That's right. Thank you so much for having me, Deanna. Always so nice chatting with you. You too. Have a great day. All right. Another good one in the books. I love how Emily breaks things down and makes them simple and doable. This was a conversation that I needed to have in my life as I feel like I am in a moment of transition myself and revamping my habits is the perfect place to start. But now it is your turn. I would love to hear what you thought about this episode. You can find me on the social channels. I am at wannabe clutter free, or you can join in the conversation on Facebook in the private community there. Just look for the wannabe minimalist family group and join on in. Or as Emily mentioned, you can leave a rating and review for this show to let us know what you thought. And of course, special thanks to Emily for sharing her expertise and her habit tips. All right, that's it for this week, but be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And until next time, take care, keep things simple, start with a tiny habit, one teeny tiny thing. And remember, I believe in you. I know you can do it. I know you can change your life. I'm Deanna Yates, and you've been listening to Wanna Be Clutter Free. I'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.